Hi, this is a brief pre-lab tutorial on error and uncertainty. So what is error and what is uncertainty? Error is not a mistake. Keep that in mind. What error is, is inaccuracies in your measuring device. And they are influenced by many factors such as personal bias, instrument inaccuracy, and even temperature. Uncertainty, on the other hand, is a range for repeat measurements. For example, you may have seen things written such as x plus or minus delta x, and all this means is that the uncertainty, which is delta x, is a, is a given range where repeat measurements will give you these values. So for example, if you're taking a measurement and you're getting 8 centimeters plus or minus 0 0.5 centimeters, then that means repeat measurements of the same object using the same device uh, possibly with different person could give you a range of values from 7.5 to 8.5 centimeters. Now let us take a look at this example to see the effects of error and uncertainty in our calculations. Let's say we want to find the height of a tree. How will we find this height of the tree using simple trigonometry? If we're standing a distance L away from the tree and sighting the top of the tree with angle theta, then we can get the height h of the tree using a simple tangent calculation. This calculation is written here. Tangent of theta is equal to height over l. If we rearrange the given equation, then we can rewrite it in terms of h. l tan theta is equal to h. But we're engineers, so all of our terms have delta terms to them. Thus theta is actually theta plus delta theta, L is L plus delta L, and H is L H plus delta H. Let's see how that changes our equation. First, from our previous slide, we have L tan theta is equal to H. Here, all I've done is first flip the equation, then plug in their respective delta terms. So as you can see, H turned into H plus delta H, L turned into L plus delta L, and theta turned into theta plus delta theta. Now let us rearrange these equations to see what we can get and solve it for delta h. In this step, all I have done is move h from the left side to the right side. This gives us an equation of just delta h. From a couple of slides back, you know that h was written as l times tan theta, and so let's replace h now with l tan theta. So now our delta h term is written purely in terms of things that we can control. The length, uh, the error in the length, the angle, and the error in the angle. And in actuality, this is really fully only controlled by how far you're standing away from the object you're trying to measure. Wow, this equation seems pretty important, so let's put a nice blue highlight around it. Actually, we're going to be talking about this equation for a while, so let's put a red box around it too. So in the previous slide, we saw that we found an equation to calculate how much error we have. So now the next question we want to answer is, how can we minimize error given this equation and given these variables that we can control, which are these the length, the theta, and their respective errors, as you can see, as I have shown here. And so what you have to think about is, how far away should I stand from the tree, which is changing the L and and also changing the theta so that we can minimize delta h. One of the approaches that we can take is a theoretical approach where we first simplify the right side of the equation distributing our l plus delta l into the tan of theta plus delta theta and simplifying the equation as much as we can. Then we will have to take the derivative of delta h which would allow us to solve for a minimum. But this requires calculus and in, in addition, the simplification process gets very complex very fast. So this, is, I feel, is not a good way to show how we can minimize the error. So instead, we'll take an empirical approach. With the empirical approach, what we'll do is use Excel to calculate these numbers. So the five columns that I've shown here are the five different numbers, the variables that we can change in our calculations. So we can change our length, we can determine our error in our length, our angle, and the error in our angle. And using the equation we saw on the previous slide, we're able to calculate the error. And so we can play around with the values and see what we can minimize. So just for example, 
I'm going to assume that the height of an object we're measuring is 100 meters. So we're measuring a 100 meter tall tree. And then, we're working backwards from that 100 meters, I'm going to use that to calculate the angle. And given the length, which I'm going to vary from 1 to 1,000, which is up to 10 times away from the tree. So this will give me a good range of angles. And then, for for the sake of calculation, I, am, I assumed for this case that the error in theta is always 5 degrees, which is an absolute error. And likewise, the error for length is always 1 meter, which is, once again, an absolute error. So for every calculation, I have either a, a range of 5 degrees on my angle or a range of 1 meter difference on my length measurements. And using these assumptions, we're going to go ahead and we're going to crunch a bunch of numbers through Excel and plot all of this onto a graph, which will allow us to see if delta H does reach a minimum. So after crunching through all the numbers, I have here, I've plotted here the plot of uh, delta H versus the length. And once again, I vary length from 1 to 1,000. So as you can see, the, the plot spikes up at the beginning and then drops back down very quickly. So at the beginning, you can kind of see that if you're standing really, really close to the tree, you're not going to get a good measurement given delta H. And let's zoom in a little more. So this here is the same graph as before. All I have done is I have zoomed in slightly more and hopefully you guys can kind of see that there is definitely a minimum. This this delta H plot definitely hits a minimum and it kind of dips down very low and then gradually increases again. So delta H is changing very little in this range of 50 to 100 meters, which is what the x-axis is. but there is definitely an, a sort of an optimal distance from which you can take this measurement. So let's go to the data and take a look at what that is. Here you can see the data points that were used to do the calculations that were shown in the previous slide. In the first column you can see that I have my delta H here in the first column just for simplicity and I highlighted it for you. This is the lowest value that delta H ever reaches which is at a length of 115 meters and an angle of 41 degrees and as you can see in the third and fifth columns our errors are one absolute error of one meter and an absolute error of five degrees so with those parameters this is the lowest point this is the optimal distance from which you should stand away from the tree which will give you the minimum error in your measurement given the length errors and the degree errors let's take a look at some other cases Here I have listed a bunch of different cases where I changed up the error assumptions and see how that affected the graph. 
I've only, I've done, as you can see, I have four cases here, but I only have two graphs. And the reason I didn't include the other graph is because they pretty much look the same. The error doesn't stray too far away from the range of 35 to 45, as you can see in all these cases. But, so for each case, when it says optimum delta H at some degree, at some distance away from the tree, it means at that distance away from the tree, it is the optimal distance given those errors to measure the height of the tree. And so this just this slide is just to give you an idea of how the the errors are going to affect the optimal distances because they end up being different functions. And in the last one, as you can see, I made it's important to note that I made the length error relative. So if you measure more meters, then you get a bigger error, and that caused the optimum angle, for example, to be slightly higher than the previous example, 41 degrees, instead now it's 42 degrees. But at the end, it's still not too f different from the, what we expected, which is you have to be relatively close to the tree at a moderate distance, and the ends are definitely not the best places, so not too far away from the tree and not too close to the tree. In conclusion, I hope you have learned uh, about how to reduce errors as much as possible in addition to what errors are, and keep in mind that how far away you are from the object when you're taking these estimations, when you're making these estimations, really matter. So keep that in mind as you go out and do your uncertainty lab. Good luck.